Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Ville Ross 8-inch display and stand for the Raspberry Pi. Now, even though this is marketed and designed for the Raspberry Pi, it's basically just a display built into a stand with an HDMI input, so you could plug in basically any HDMI-enabled device to this unit. But Vilross makes a lot of accessories for the Raspberry Pi, and this one here is being marketed as a Raspberry Pi 4 display. Now, one of the main reasons I picked this up was actually for the Raspberry Pi 400, not exactly the Raspberry Pi 4, but we're really close here. So inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the 8-inch display. And as you can see, it's a display with a stand built in. Raspberry Pi 4 will mount to the back of it. And one of the cool things about this is the case kind of pops right off. So we can just take this off, put it to the side if you want to connect it to anything else. But when it's all put together, we can mount that Raspberry Pi 4 on the back of this screen. So along with the screen itself, we do get some accessories to get everything up and going. First up, we have our power supply. 5 volts, 4 amps, and it has the 5.5 millimeter jack to power the screen and a USB Type-C to power your Raspberry Pi. So it's a single plug into the wall and we can power both of those units. We also get our custom HDMI cables. They're a lot shorter than normal. And this is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 3B Plus, and the Raspberry Pi 4, at least mounting it to the back of the unit with all of the accessories included. So the first thing I want to do is set this up like it's supposed to be out of the box with the Raspberry Pi 4. But once I'm done with that, we're going to move over to the Raspberry Pi 400, and I'm going to show you the setup I'm using with this specific 8-inch screen. So it's actually super easy to put this together. It does come with that fan built into the top plate here. I've already disconnected the case from the back of the unit itself, and the Raspberry Pi 4 is just basically going to sit right in here. It comes with four screws to mount it down. Once it's all assembled, this will go right on the top. We can plug that fan in to 5 volts or 3.3, and then route the custom HDMI cables that are included with the unit. So I'm going to go ahead and get this Raspberry Pi mounted in here. And once I have the Raspberry Pi mounted, I just need to plug in this fan here. I mean, this is totally optional. If you don't want the fan plugged in, you don't have to do it. But I'm going to go with the 5 volt configuration. And the top just snaps right back on. And now all I really need to do is slide this whole case system right on the back of the unit. I would actually recommend plugging in that HDMI cable before you do it, but it slides right on and back off very easily. We can pull this top off if you ever need to access the GPIO pins or anything like that. And it does have plenty of ventilation. Taking a look at the back of the screen itself, we have a single 5.5 millimeter 5 volt input and full size HDMI. Comes with these custom cables here. They're a lot shorter than normal, but everything should plug right in nicely. Now, when I ordered this, I didn't even think about it, but this doesn't have speakers built in. That's going to be a big letdown for a lot of people. I figured it would have at least one speaker built in, and if it did, it would make this unit a lot better. But unfortunately, it is a speakerless display. So as for powering up the unit, it does come with that 5-volt power supply. We have a USB Type-C cable and a 5.5 millimeter jack on here. So one of them is going to plug into the Pi, one of them is going to plug into the power port on the screen itself. And here it is. I'm running Raspberry Pi OS on this 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. Like I mentioned, we don't have any speakers built in. It's super unfortunate, but I did add a Bluetooth speaker just so we could get a little bit of sound out of it. Straight off the bat, I do love the aspect ratio here. It is 4x3. It's not 16x9 or 16x10. So if you did want a retro game on this, games are going to look great. You won't have those borders on the side. It's got great colors, and viewing angles aren't bad at all. I mean, this is an IPS display. It's not a top-of-the-line IPS. This is a mid-range deal here. At that $50 price point, I don't think it looks bad at all. I think this is actually a nice little 8-inch screen for your Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a video test here. I just pulled up a YouTube video I like to test. Big Buck Bunny. I know a lot of you might have been missing this in my videos. I kind of scrapped it for a little while. But it's just really easy to go back to because it is an open source video. I'm going to go full screen with it. I haven't noticed any screen tearing or anything like that, and I actually wasn't even worried about it because we are connected over HDMI. If we were connected over GPIO, I'd be worried about that, but the way it sits right now, it actually looks pretty good. And like I said, viewing angles are actually pretty decent here. There is a lot of glare from my lights in here, but uh, overall, if you were just sitting this on your desk, you'd have no issues with it whatsoever. I think it's a decent little screen for the Raspberry Pi 4. Unfortunately, 
we don't have speakers built in, and that's going to be a big pass for a lot of people, unless you don't mind using external speakers like a Bluetooth speaker, or even over the 3.5mm audio jack from the Pi. Okay, so like I said at the beginning, I really wanted to pick this up for the Raspberry Pi 400, so let's move over there now. Alright, so here we are with the Raspberry Pi 400. Now I'm going to go about hooking this up a little bit different. Like we saw, the screen comes with that dual power supply. We have a 5.5mm jack to power the screen and the USB Type-C to power the Raspberry Pi when it's all connected on the back of the screen. But what I've done is picked up a simple USB to 5.5mm barrel jack connector here. So this screen runs on 5 volts and we should be able to push out enough power from one of the USB ports on the Pi 400 to power the screen. So I'm going to plug one end into the Raspberry Pi 400, the other end into the power jack on the 8 inch screen. I'm going to plug in my HDMI and hopefully if everything goes well, we'll be able to power this up. All I need to do is add power to the Raspberry Pi 400. And hopefully if all goes well, we'll actually be powering the screen from the Raspberry Pi 400's USB 3.0 port. Now this will take up one of the ports, but we already have a keyboard built in here. So we'll still have two USB ports free on the Pi 400 when it's all said and done. So I'm actually using an official Raspberry Pi USB Type-C power supply here, and there we go. I'm going to go ahead and let this boot up, and I'm pretty sure we will have enough power coming from one of those USB 3.0 ports on the Pi 400 for this screen. And yeah, it's actually looking good. It's asking me to pair that Bluetooth speaker back up, so let me go ahead and get my mouse and everything set up, and we'll come right back to it. So far, so good. I do need to put a load on the CPU just to make sure it doesn't dip that power on that USB port enough to cut the screen off, but I think it'll be fine. So far, I haven't had any issues. We're going to head over to YouTube and see what happens. And by the way, I do have that Bluetooth speaker connected. I mean, this would have been really nice with at least a single speaker built in, and they did have enough room in this case itself. When I was ordering this, it didn't even cross my mind. I figured we'd have some sound built into this unit. So yeah, this is working great with the Raspberry Pi 400. I like this little desktop setup, but uh, I think the aspect ratio with this 8-inch screen is perfect for retro gaming. So I think we need to get into a little bit of that. And for this, I'm actually going to be testing the Redream emulator. I'm still going to be sticking with Raspberry Pi OS. I've already got it installed, ready to go. I just need to launch it. Yeah, and it's filling the screen perfectly here. I'm going to check my resolution. Looks good here. Let's go ahead and start a game. We'll go with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And by the way, this is a FlyDigi Apex controller. It does come with a 2.4 GHz dongle, so you don't have to connect it over Bluetooth and worry about that. You just plug it in, and it works. So yeah, it definitely works great with these older games, because a lot of them were meant to be run on a 4x3 aspect ratio screen. As you can see here, we don't have any black lines on the side here. I got no screen tearing, and it just looks really good, especially with these Dreamcast games. I'm going to go ahead and move over to one more here, and we'll wrap it up. So in the end, I do like the setup of the screen, whether you're using a Raspberry Pi 400 with it or a Raspberry Pi attached to the back of it. It does have that one major drawback with no speakers built in. And if it had speakers, I could recommend this to everybody, but unfortunately, it doesn't have any sound built in and that's going to be a big letdown for a lot of people. But I gotta say, I still think it's a great screen here, especially if you're in the market for a 4x3 aspect ratio screen for retro gaming or even just native computing on the Raspberry Pi or the Pi 400. I think it's a nice little setup, got some good colors, great brightness, and the viewing angles aren't bad at all. So yeah, I do think this is a decent display if you're looking for something in this form factor and size. And on my channel, I've actually reviewed a lot of Vilra stuff, it's usually hit or miss. The last couple items I reviewed weren't that great, but this one here is something that I could recommend. Anywhere from $50 to $60, depending on where you get it. I think it's $60 on Amazon, it's $50 on their site. If you have a use case scenario for something like this, I would definitely try it out. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you come across any more cool little screens like this for the Raspberry Pi or any Raspberry Pi accessories that you want to see reviewed, just let me know down below and I'll try to get my hands on one and we'll make a video on it. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.